All right, team, we are headed straight to Crossville, Tennessee to go visit Whisper Aero. They're an innovative company that truly is the future of flight. We hang out all day long with co-founder Ian Villa, who's also the CEO and CPO of the company. We did a podcast with him, Professionally Offensive. Go check out that episode where we dive into the human dynamics of business, humanizing success, and what it takes to run a cutting edge company. But on this, we get to go behind, behind the scenes of how it's all done. So we tour their facilities, we check out this Jetson style vehicle uh, that really does make you feel like you're in the future and you know has the, the future of flight in your mind very vibrantly. We check out their main headquarters where it's just full of a bunch of great folks overlooking this gorgeous lake and having everything from 3D printing to engineering and testing going on in one facility. We also take a quick detour to a playhouse. If you don't know what a playhouse is, I didn't either. And so think Shakespeare meets Broadway. And being that Ian sits on the board there, we're able to get a look behind the scenes and check out what they call an adventure theater and a couple other things involved. It was an amazing place. The place smelled great too. It actually smelled like kettle corn popcorn. So we'll be back. I thought it was only country music in Tennessee. So we are checking out the HQ tour. This is like literally what you see when you first walk into the place. Legit. I mean, it's got great long views of this lake. I think it all used to be an old resort, or some old country club or something that um, that Mark, the other co-founder and the CEO of the company, bought. And so they were able to put their team here. I mean, just gorgeous. And then you got the leaves changing colors out here in Tennessee. Just a really great spot to be. So we walked through here. And as we were walking through the headquarters, Ian was super nice to show us some parts of the headquarters that, again, it just doesn't feel like a tech company. It feels like a, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a company that maybe is making beer or has adventure associated with it. There's just something rough and rustic around the edges that just makes this thing super approachable. This main conference room is awesome because it looks and reminds me of a like old 1970s conference room with wood everywhere. And it's neat to see they just embrace that. But you can see all these photos of all these future aircrafts or aircrafts that have existed in the past that were futuristic at that point. Mark, who the other co-founder and the CEO of the company, is a super hardcore NASA guy. It's where he grew up, it's where he's done a lot of his time. Ian grew up in the Uber Elevate world where they were also figuring out flight and he's a hardcore aerospace guy, you know, double Stanford major. Uh, in uh, in flight and in aerospace and aerotechnologies. And so being in this conference room, even though it had this old vibe to it, it had this new vibe with all these cool pictures. You can also see in this section, we're on our way out and there's like this mock-up of an aircraft. It must be kind of a concept that they're putting together. It reminds me of my time in the service. We used to have these mock-up aircrafts to practice jumping out of airplanes and to kind of simulate what the process looks like. So we got a kick out of that as we got to see that. So we continued walking through Whisper Aero, Aero HQ. And as we were walking through, you see the food off to the side. They actually, we showed up and they're like, are y'all hungry? I'm like, we're always hungry. And like, all right, well, we just ordered some food. Why don't y'all dig in? The entire time, the hospitality of this entire team threw the roof good. Just super warm and welcoming. I think you feel like you're gonna walk into a tech firm and I've been to many of them and there's just gonna be something kind of sterile about the place, not here. I mean, this feels like a lodge and you're hanging out with a bunch of snowboarders and mountain climbers. And so we walk in and one of the rooms here off uh, to the side is where they do all their building of these parts. They got 3D printers, they got different machines and mills and different tools that allow them to build all these pieces custom. And so we were looking around here and earlier we had stopped in and, and took a look at these 3D printers, which are amazing to see. And I have a little bit of insight into these 3D printers, but when you look at them up close, you can see that they're, being, they're using these spools here to feed materials of all kinds to be able to build these custom parts. Because really what these guys and gals are doing at Whisper Arrow are, are unique and cutting edge. So they have to build these parts from scratch. And when we first looked at this, it was just a small, tiny piece. We came back, not but a, you know, 30, 45 minutes later, and that thing is really being built. But it takes time and it takes effort to kind of procure all these things. Then we walk into this next room, and this is where a lot of their team sits and a lot of their engineers and designers. I'm just gonna take a look at some of their workspace and workshop. I really dig this spot. It reminds me of my old woodworking shops back home 
when you grew up in high school, whatever, it just kind of has those like benches. And what's kind of neat is to see an innovative tech company also have this hardware vibe to it. Um, so it's this balance of not just technology and programming, but it also has this, let's build stuff with our hands. So we went through there and then we showed up, uh, well then before we showed up, we took a quick detour to a playhouse. Howdy, ma'am. Hi. I'm just taking a quick peek. Wow, this place smells great too. I think they're getting ready for their next, their next show. God. But here's what it looks like kind of deconstructed. Here. Let's go to do rehearsals, auditions. Here, real quick, just to some context to why we're here. I got, I got Ian, co-founder, COO, CPO, Whisper Arrow. But we're here at a playhouse. And the reason we're here at a playhouse, not only sits on the board of the playhouse, but it literally is right next to one of their HQ buildings. That's right. I've never seen anything in my life. I think you see it like on the show Friends or something. Isn't Phoebe doing something on the show one day? Anyway, all that to say, like this is something of movies. And it just so happened that as we're touring their innovative and tech, uh, all the cutting edge stuff they're doing, we took a quick, and obviously well known, man, everybody knows you in there. <laughs> so it smells great. Like I can't smell it through the camera, but it, the popcorn smells amazing, man, coming to this place. So he gave us one of these. Apparently they're doing the little shop of horrors little today. Shop of horrors, yeah. yeah. So cool, it's man. It's a great place. It's really fun. This is their intimate theater, the adventure theater. So cool. We're going to have to come back in. Yeah. Well, we'll come for a show. We'll come for a show, man. We'll be like, hey, man, look, Whisper is great and everything else, but let's just go watch a show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks for this, man. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Well, now I know, man. Maybe coming to Tennessee more often is the, is Tennessee, the name. Tennessee, underrated. Underrated. Totally underrated. underrated, man. I think everybody just thinks... Country Western music. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not like you don't think innovative tech, you don't think culture. They should be. Yeah, they should, they should be. be. Again, this is like a treat, right? Because you don't expect to have this detour. It's got nothing to do with flight or propulsion or technology. It's got to do with the old school ways of acting and doing Broadway. Just Ian, man, he's my kind of people. So we wrap up there, and now we're headed off to the facility, their testing and wind tunnel facility. So when we walk into this facility, you'll see this disassembled wind tunnel. I think it was something, I don't want to say found it on Craigslist, but it was something that this, he was telling me that this uh, hardcore triathlete, I hope I'm remembering this right, but it's like this hardcore triathlete was had their own private wind tunnel to maximize their ability to stay, you know, as aerodynamic as possible. Well, no longer needed it. And so fortunately for them, they were able to procure this from this individual and bring it inside into this facility here. So they're gonna set this thing up. It's gonna be amazing. And they're gonna have their own testing of, um, of aero, you know, being aerodynamic. They're gonna test their vehicles and see how aerodynamic their, their, um, their new propulsion systems are along with probably future aircraft they're gonna be building with. So we get done there checking out the wind tunnel. And then what we do is also walk around this mock-up of this Whisper Aerojet, and it is sick. We're here with Whisper Aero, yep. HQ 2.0, what do you call this? Uh, it's going to be a manufacturing Manufacturing testing. hub yep. here, yep. Um, talk to us a little bit about this freaking hot, this thing looks like something from the future, man. Yeah, Tell us yeah, about yeah. what this is. So this is a uh, Whisper Jet cabin mock-up. Uh, what you're looking at is, is kind of a 5C variant. Where there's four passengers, one pilot. And we built this out so that our investors and our customers could understand what the future could look like for regional air mobility, but then also in how our propulsion systems integrate onto the future of aviation. And so with this, the cool thing is now when someone under, or, you know, comes here and wants to understand how these aircraft and our fans get integrated, 
we can tell that story of, you know, it's not just about building something that's electric and ducted and on a wing, but it's, it's how you integrate multiple of these fans along the wing to get to a, a drastically better solution. Um, and I think people don't realize it, but when you electrify aircraft, you can get to these prices of, of traveling every day that's as cheap as driving in your car, yeah. you get there five times faster. And this doesn't have to be, you know, once every month or once in a blue moon flying from uh, Nashville to Johnson City. I mean, flying can be an everyday activity all of us uh, can afford. And that'll be a game changer for the way that we live our lives. It's so slick, man. I love what y'all did too. You really are painting the vision for somebody about, okay, all this stuff, we're doing the technology, all these things are really great, but what is the end state? Why mm -hmm. do you care, right? And this is it. So you can go somewhere faster, cleaner, um, and more efficiently. We initially looked at four passengers, one pilot, because we were really familiar with it. It's also a lot cheaper to, to go build. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but when you actually look at the regional air mobility market, you want a nine passenger, one pilot jet. Okay. When you do that, you can actually get to this 12,500 pound limit for part 23, but make the vehicle as productive as possible, which means, you know, you fly one flight, but you fill it and you're able to amortize the cost for all nine of those passengers and do it in a, you know, airframe that's comfortable and affordable yeah. for everyday use. Yeah. Killer, man. I mean, this is great, man. I think it really helps you visualize. Can I sit in it real quick? Yeah. All right, watch out, man. We're about to take off. This is cool, man. It's, uh, who do you get to build something like this? We got some people. <laughs> we got some people. <laughs> this is, uh, again, first cut, so. Yeah, but, um, it's, but I get what you're doing. This is such an important thing for a company to help people not only visualize, but to go like, oh, yeah, I see all the pitch decks and stuff you're sending me. That's great. But to be able to come in here and go like, well, let me go Beautiful. sit in this thing, you know, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it makes and it, it real. Just, makes it real. And it just kicks butt, man. So after we wrap up there, um, we head home. Well, I mean, this team actually invited us out to go do uh, some barbecue and do a bonfire. I think even take a canoe out on the lake. It's just one of those teams, like everybody came out. They're so nice, easy to get along with. We had an epic time with them. Whisper Arrow was absolutely a trip worth making and we'll definitely have to be we'll definitely be going back to go talk to mark the ceo uh, and ian again and probably a couple more of their teammates i look forward to it we're hoping that sometime next year while they're continuing to develop their tech we continue to go visit and stay in touch with them but what the last thing i'll leave you with on the behind the scenes here is tennessee surprised me and whisper arrow really put that in my mind is that they got really great people moving to Tennessee and doing techie things, which I think is not what you think about. You think country music, you think maybe manufacturing of other sorts, or you think you know blue collar jobs, and those are all great and all super important. But to see this company that's like a Tesla or like a Uber Elevate or something being in Crossville, Tennessee, where the cost of living is super affordable, and you get to walk through these enormous facilities with awesome teammates and a culture that is kind of this equal balance of like rustic meets high tech just really cool to see so tennessee is definitely a sleeper state when it comes to the tech stuff and we hope to continue to find more and more companies like this so thanks for tuning in whisper arrow check out what they got going on they're always looking and hiring for good people and if you haven't checked out the podcast please do so i think you'll love the insights ian provides all right y'all that's all i got we'll see you on the high ground